How you doing, YouTube? Silver Joker here. Uh, <laughs> another month, another uh, silver stack and gold to uh, reach. Uh, I got this 100-ounce bar here. Phil called me and said he had a 100-ounce bar. If I'd be interested in it, I said, yeah, 100-ounce bar, absolutely. Beautiful 100-ounce bar. Plus, I had a conversation with him about the uh, 2020 Eagles. So if you guys are interested in any of that, stick around. So Phil called me Saturday evening and said, look, man, I got a 100-ounce bar down here. Are you interested? And I said, 100-ounce uh, bar? Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I went down there, took a look at this bar, and uh, fell in love with it. This bar is beautiful. The toning on there, you, this video is not going to do this bar justice. The toning, this all-natural toning, this bar is probably, you know, 1980s vintage uh, around that time. Beautiful Silvertown uh 100 ounce bar as soon as i saw it yeah i knew it was coming home with me now my goal include my goal for um june includes at least 100 ounces uh or more so i just figured i'd go ahead and start right off the bat and just go ahead and put 100 ounces away but i also bought some other silver while i was there so um this is just part of it so i'll let you guys hear some of the conversation that we had he talked a little bit about uh the, the 2020 eagles and what may, maybe what they're um, what they're gonna be uh, if there's gonna be like a, a key date 2020 eagle or something like that. And this is purely his opinion. You guys got to realize that. And I've said it before. It's purely his opinion. But he's been doing this for 35 plus years. So he's been uh, you know dealing with numismatic, the numismatic side of silver, uh, and just the stacking side of it. He buys it. He sells it. He trades it. You know he's the guy is. A fountain of knowledge uh, when it comes to um, the subject, you know, stacking silver. So uh, I, I listen to him, but like I said, it is purely his opinion. You know, he doesn't have a crystal ball. He doesn't know the future, but based on some of the knowledge that he has, um, some of the stuff that he says about the future, I think is relevant to what uh, we're doing as stackers. So anyway, I'll let that play, and then uh, I'll talk to you guys on the other side. Phil, what do you think? You think things are getting ready to change around? I mean, you think things are going to be getting back to some type of normal here pretty soon? Or? I think most people are going to try to resume normal, you know, life as we knew it. Uh, now, whether that takes a fast step or slow steps, I, it's hard to say, but I think eventually we'll get around to it. And I think it'll be faster than what people assume it will be. I think people feel more comfortable getting out. Um, spending money, feeling a little bit better about the economy as it starts turning around. And um, I think we'll see, I think we'll see normalcy um, in the fall, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. The premiums, I think, um, were excessive before uh, based on where spot was on silver and based on what people were asking for the silver buy price. And I think we're going to see that gap close. Um, well, that would be a good thing. That would be a refreshing yes. change because the premiums are a little, little excessive. They're a little out of whack right. uh, from where we've seen uh, in the past, and I think they're, they're, that will start closing. And I think part of it will be from both ends. I think the premiums will slowly start to erode, but the spot price is also working up. So between the two, uh, we'll meet in the center a lot quicker than if just one was working uh, against the other. So. Um, as the spot prices move up and the premiums start to, um, you know, diminish because there are more buyers and sellers in the market now. And I think that's where we saw a lot of the discrepancy was once it just stopped, once you had buyers and sellers stop buying and selling as we did in the last few months, it became imperative for people that wanted to buy silver to go out and look for it. And I think that's what drove a lot of the premiums up. On that same note, there is there anything that you see that's kind of like a breakout piece? I mean, by that I mean like the, the 2020 Eagles. They're saying that maybe 2020 Eagles are going to be a key date because of you know the pandemic and how things were kind of stressed in the in the mines and the mints and stuff like that. I mean, did you do you see anything that may may be more valuable now because of the pandemic? 
Well, I think 2020 is going to be the year of the pandemic, and I think anything dated 2020 will have that remembrance of that. Whether it ends up being a key date is really remains to be seen. We're only halfway through the year, and we don't know what the minutes for the year will be. So I think it's a little bit premature to, to consider 2020 being anything other than anything that you have that's dated 2020, you'll probably remember that, that was the year that this all happened, and it was the first time that, you know, uh, on a federal level we simply stopped the economy and said okay we're just gonna we're all gonna sit at home for a month and, and wait this out and basically that's what we did so outside of that remembrance of 2020 i don't know i mean time will tell whether or not there will be any any um, extreme value for anything dated 2020. Um, i think eagles will resume normal production and at the end of the year when there's a total mintage number that's put out uh, will determine whether or not it was something that should have been held on to or collected. Uh, typically, I think the Mint will do a good job in, in meeting demand for, for the Silver Eagles. They always have. Um, and But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, you know, they have this um, emergency Eagle out now, the emergency Philadelphia Mint uh, 2020 Eagle that everybody's scrambling to get. And the premiums through the roof on that. Yeah. I just saw one uh, before I came down here, and somebody wanted 300 bucks for you know just a one ounce 2020 emergency supply eagle. I mean, what, how do you see that uh, kind of metering out? Do you think that's a good investment? I mean, I, like I said, I know it's just your personal opinion, but um, you know, um, if one walked in, let's say I wouldn't hesitate to buy it. Mm -hmm. Now, would I pay that much? Probably not, but. Um, I think it's a unique piece. I think it's a, a good remembrance piece of 2020. Um, and it is a lower mintage eagle in terms of the mint mark. I, um, I know that the 70s, the, the graded 70s are, are selling for high dollars. The 69 seemed to drop off dramatically. Well, that's what I bought. I bought <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I, I did buy a okay. 69. <laughs> well, uh. in that respect then, try to think that if the coin in generally was going to be a huge success, um, it shouldn't matter whether it's a 70 or 69. You, you, you shouldn't see, there's a huge difference, price difference between a 70 and a 69. So just using prior knowledge in terms of what's happened in years past and in terms of the Eagle series, um, I think it's going to be a collectible coin, but not something that's going to hold a $300 value in the future. Um, only because that would tell me that if the 70s are selling for 300 today, the 69 should be selling somewhere in the low 200s then because if it was that collectible of a coin, right. you would think that there shouldn't be such a price drop yeah. off. Uh, but I would think that if the coin was going to be a dramatic, huge success to the Eagle collectors that um, all realms of the, whether it's graded or ungraded, would be selling much higher and they would be closer in relationship to pricing because it really wouldn't matter. On true scarcity of coins, um, you, you're going to see a, the impact of the, of the grade meaning less uh, in terms of paying for it. When you have a large selection of coins, then grades start meaning right. a lot more in terms of value. Mm -hmm. So you end up paying more for the higher grade things. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So in terms of true rarity, um, just from experience, a true rarity in this particular series, there's a discrepancy between high grade and, and the second grade down, which is a 69 or even a 68. Um, to me, those should be much higher if they were, if this was going to be a right. true, true rarity in right. the Silver Eagle series. I think they've now, I, I don't know, but I think they've stopped minting them. So there is, I think there's a definitive now amount from okay. the Philadelphia Mint. I don't know that they're still minting them. If they are, I'm unaware of it. But that will, if they are, that's going to certainly dilute the collectability of right. them if they're going to continue to mint them. But if they've simply taken up production wall of West Point stopped or Mm -hmm. You know, San Francisco stopped. I'm not sure we even which which mint facility stopped production during this time, if they did at all. But um, if there's a definitive mount and we haven't seen um, pricing jump for all of them, whether it's graded, ungraded, whatever, then I think you're pretty safe in assuming that it's it's going to be a unique coin, but right. not not a right. rare rare gotcha. coin in terms of rarity. Right. All right. Well, there was a lot more to uh, me and Phil's conversation there. 
a lot more. And I'll probably share that in upcoming videos. But I just thought it was interesting to hear his perspective on these, um, on what I've been hearing about the 2020 Eagles, especially the um, emergency um, emergency mint or the emergency 2020 Eagle um, due to the pandemic. So I bought one. I bought a, a PCGS uh, MS69 uh, just to have it, you know, because who knows what. Uh, what the future is going to bring. And like I said, this is Phil's opinion. I mean, this is his opinion based on his experience, but it's his opinion. Uh, so so if you've bought, you know, the, the, the emergency Eagle, the Philadelphia Eagle, um, then, you know, it's a good buy for you. Um, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. And if you like Eagles like I like Eagles, you know, you just got to have one anyway. You got to have one just because it's a 2020 Eagle and it's kind of, um, you know, kind of give kind of, one of the Eagles from this time period, which is going to be historic, no doubt about that. Okay, so anyway, that's all I want to share with you guys today. I don't want this video to go too long. And like I said, I'll share more of this conversation in future videos. But if you like what you see, uh, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more, uh, you might want to consider subscribing and ringing that bell uh, so you get notified when I put out another video. And this is what my videos basically are like. You know, they're, 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 they're positive videos. I try to give you information on silver stacking if you're interested in that type of subject. And I kind of make it, I try to make it entertaining and somewhat educational. Um, so anyway, uh, let's just keep this silver train rolling. Appreciate you guys stopping by and giving me the comments. And, uh, you know, let's just keep on looking out for each other, man. The future is still coming. Nothing's going to stop. No matter what's going on, tomorrow is going to come. And it's up to you how you face it how you look at it. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace.